Hey, what's happening? It's B-Side with The Bass Factory. Today we're doing part two. Part two of the top five things you need to know before buying your first bass. So we did part one of top five tips to buy your first bass and the feedback has been awesome. And it, you guys have had some great ideas. So I just felt like we needed to take those ideas and make part two of the top five things you need to know before buying your first base. So now there's gonna be like 10 things that you need to know before buying your first base. If you haven't seen the first video, make sure to click below in the description and you can check out the first one. Also in the first one, we got some great comments on the base I was using, which was a limited edition Music Man Stingray. So we brought out the other Stingray in the collection. Yep, that's right, white headstock. Boom, two humbuckers. This is called the slow special. We'll get into that later. Let's go ahead and jump right into the next five things you need to think about before buying your first bass. And number one, or number six, if you watched the first video first, is do you want a four or a five string bass? This was such a great comment that somebody made, and it really is an interesting point. Now, I used to own a guitar store. I've worked in the music industry a long time. And I've never really had beginner players coming in asking for a five string, but I think that has to do with the fact of education. Most of those players don't really probably understand what the five string is or if they need a five string or whatever the case might be. What the five string does is it adds another string, a thicker string that's actually a B. So you get more notes or, and they're lower, they're fatter notes. So why does that matter? Well, it matters if the people that you are going to be learning their songs if their bass player uses a five string bass. So if you're up there and like, hey, listen, I wanna learn some Bruno Mars stuff, right? I mean, I wanna do that, boom, boom, boom. You're gonna buy a four string bass, go home and realize his bass player plays a five string bass and you're gonna be frustrated because some of the tablature you're gonna be looking at is gonna be for a five string bass and you're gonna to have to figure out a way to make it sound good on a four string bass. That's probably the only reason of a beginner would start with a five string, other than the fact you know long term, you have friends that play bass or whatever the case is, and you want to learn five string, like that's in your heart to do it, then fine, do it. It does bring another level of complexity to learning the bass, so because we're talking about first basses and beginners, you know, that's why it didn't come up in the first video, but it's a great point to think about. So four versus five string bass, Look at the music you're gonna to wanna to learn. Take the music to the guitar store, print it off online, wherever you get your music, take it to the guitar store, and even if you don't know if it's four or five string, you can ask the person there, do I need a four or five string bass to play this? And they'll be able to help you out. So that's number six slash one. Number two is short scale versus long scale. Somebody made this point, and it's actually a really interesting point. So what scale length refers to is the distance between the bridge, so that's this piece here, and what they call the nut, and so it's the distance that the string of the of the str that the string is allowed to vibrate. So this is going to be a long scale bass. It's a regular size bass, and the scale length is measured from the bridge all the way to that to the nut. And they make basses that are smaller, right? So it's an interesting point as a beginner of why you would play a short scale versus a long scale. Now. There's much fewer short scale basses out there. Much fewer, many fewer. There's a lot less <laughs> short scale basses out there than long scale. But if you have small hands or if you're a parent looking at this video for your kids, it's actually worth talking about short scale because they're gonna be easier to play. Everything's gonna be a little more condensed, a little more compact. And I would say for a first bass, it's actually worth a conversation because it's gonna be an easier hurdle for you to play the, play the bass on a short scale, okay? Um, if you are an average or, you know, if you have average size hands or even larger hands, you're not gonna stay on a short scale bass for long, um, but it is interesting for the first purchase. So just know that they're out there. Short scale versus long scale, 90%, 95% of the time, I'm gonna recommend just go with the regular, um, what they call a long scale bass. Um, it's what you're gonna be playing for years and years and years. The majority of basses are that. Get comfortable with it from the start. But if there's another reason for you to go short scale, then hey, just know it's there. Number three, number three in our new revised version of five more things you need to know is P bass versus jazz bass. 
Now, I know that sounds very generic, but just like in the world of guitars, where you have like Strat versus Les Paul with a Tele thrown in there, you kind of have the same concept in bass guitars, meaning Fender came out with the precision bass and the jazz bass, and people have been copying that for years. So most basses that you see on the wall either kind of fall under a jazz bass style category or a precision bass style category. And the thing I want you to know about that in this point is the neck is different, okay? So a precision bass neck is actually a little bit wider, okay? It, it, there's more what they call string spacing or space between the strings and it's a little bit wider. The jazz bass is a little narrower. So there's actually, they feel significantly different when you're playing them. I personally prefer jazz bass style necks, okay? So when you go into a guitar store and you're playing basses for the first time, I want you to ask the, the person helping you, do you have a jazz bass style neck I can play and do you have a precision bass style neck I can play? I want you to feel the difference. Here's what's interesting, and this, this I got a lot of com compliments actually, and thank you guys, on the Stingray that I was playing in the last video. One of the interesting things is that was a standard Stingray neck this is a Music Man Stingray, what they call a slow special. What they've done with this Stingray, and the reason I'm playing this one so much more, is this neck is not a standard width of a Stingray neck, it's actually a narrower, more jazz bass style neck. So that actually gives me that jazz bass feel with the Stingray body, which is awesome, I love that. All right, our next point, because we cannot delay any longer, number four here is the electronics, okay? so. You really, when you walk into a music store, there's gonna be so many things hanging on the wall. It's gonna be very, it's probably gonna be overwhelming when you're actually shopping for this next, for your bass. Well, something you have to think about is the electronics. And what do I mean by electronics? I mean, all of this. How many pickups? So the pickups are the, the pieces that get put here on the body that actually pick up the vibrations of the strings. You have knobs and you have switches. You have all sorts of stuff going on here. And you need to know, like, do I want a lot of stuff going on or do I want it to be simple? So the Fender, the standard precision bass in its standard format is one pickup, no switches, a couple knobs. It is a plug and play rock and roll machine, okay? The jazz bass in its standard configuration has two pickups. It, you can roll the, which pickup is turned on and off and get all sorts of sounds and tones and all sorts of good stuff. And you need to think about that. As a beginner player, do you want to bring the complexity of all those electronics into you learning bass? And you might, you might like, you might be a fiddler that you like all the sounds and tones and all that stuff. Or you might be a person that's just like, hey, I wanna plug in and go. I don't wanna deal with all the drama. So you need to consider that. You need to think about, okay, do I care about all the switches and knobs? And to be honest, the more switches and knobs and things like that, the more things that can go wrong too. I mean, we've all had it. If you've been playing for any length of time, potentiometers start going bad, so you start turning the knob and it gets scratchy, switches go bad, all sorts of stuff happens. Pickups go bad. Uh, it's, it's inevitable, that stuff's gonna happen. Um, this one specifically, the Stingray has two what they call humbuckering pickups in it. It has a five-way switch, so every position on this switch actually turns on different parts of the pickup for different sounds. I have four different knobs. So when I'm playing, I have to think about all of that stuff and as a beginner, you might not want to do that, okay? So just consider the electronics. Do you want single, just a single pickup? Do you want dual pickups? Just think about it before you go into the store. Number five, or number 10, if you watched the first video first and came over to this one, is the same one as the first one because it's so important. Number five slash nine slash 10 is the inspiration, okay? You need to be inspired. I'm reiterating this from the first video the inspiration trumps every single one of these points, okay? No matter what, I don't care how many pickups it has, how many knobs it has, how many switches it has, I don't care what the neck width is, I don't care about short scale, long scale, medium scale, it has 3,500 strings, it does this, that, and the other thing, it does flips. If you are not inspired to pick that bass up every day and play it, it's useless. I do not want you to buy a bass that ends up underneath your bed or in a closet and never gets played. I want that thing predominantly displayed in your living room or your bedroom, wherever, hanging on the wall or in a guitar stand. And when you look at that thing, I want you to just, I just want you to feel like you want to play it, okay? That's what this bass does for me. I love this bass. 
I love picking up this bass. I love playing this bass. And it is, I have it in my office, it's always out. It's always ready to go. Um, and I want that to be the bass for you. So it's worth going into your local, local guitar store. Once you've kind of figured out the general idea of the type of bass you want, have the sales associate bring down three, four, five of them. Put them on stands, look at them, play them all, like really get into it and figure out which one of them inspires you most. The reality is you might have three or four bases that, that look almost exactly the same, but you pick up one and it just feels better and the body sounds better. Like when you play, it just resonates more. It's gonna inspire you more. That is the trump card that, that overtakes everything else, right? I don't care. You could have all eight or nine of our other reasons all lined up and then the inspiration one can take them all out. So with that, Thank you so much for joining me. Put in the comments what you would put in. Maybe we'll do a third video of five more things you need to know before buying your first bass. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. B-Side with the Bass Factory at your service. We'll be talking to you soon.